Something just occurred to me. The seating's all wrong. How so, Mr. Charleston? I'm sitting next to Dora. Well, what's wrong with that? She's your wife, isn't she? Exactly, but at a proper dinner party. The husband is never seated next to the wife. Actually, I should be on the opposite side of the table. Mr. Wang, will you change places with me? No, Mr. Talton? No, Mr. Wang. <laughs> Just as I thought. Another test that could have cost us our lives. Saved only by the fact that I am enormously well-bred. Lucky it wasn't me. I'd been chopped liver by now. <laughs> Do not panic. No person move from place. Someone just came into the room. I hear footsteps. Oh. Wait! Quiet! Everyone! I smell something. What is it? Good God! Franks and beans! I'm afraid that's all we have, sir. Dickie, don't. You know how I get when you touch me there. Not me, darling. I got my hands in my pockets. Oh. I'm afraid you're my pocket. Oh, sorry about that. Dickie, behave yourself. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. I'm your host, Lionel Twain. Good God, what an entrance. Oh, a bit theatrical, Miss Marble, but I do so love illusion. Please forgive my hat. I'm losing my hair. I thought Twain was an older man, say 72, 73. 76, to be exact, Mr. Diamond. How do I look so young? Quite simple. A complete vegetable diet, 12 hours sleep a night, and lots and lots of makeup. I trust you've all been made comfortable. Comfortable, Mr. Twain? You call poisoned wine a near decapitation comfortable? No, uh, I call it inspiration. You still have not explained the various mechanical and culinary attempts on our lives, Monsieur Twain. Merely games, Monsieur Perrier. Pitting wits with you, so to speak. You pit your wits with me, little man, and you won't have your wits to pit with. Know what I mean? Sam, you're spitting on the nurse. Sorry, old lady. Crazy broad should be in bed. Monsieur Twain, we have been here nearly four hours, and there has not been a hint of a hot dinner or a cold corpse. I must therefore bid you adieu. I bid one adieu as well. No one is leaving this house. What meaning of this, Mr. Twain? I will tell you, Mr. Wang, if you can tell me why a man who possesses one of the most brilliant minds of this century can't say his prepositions or articles. The, Mr. Wang, what is the meaning of this? That's what I said. What meaning of this? The meaning of this is that I have decided to prove beyond a shadow of a doubt that the greatest living criminologist in the world is sitting at this table and you are all looking at him. No, don't look at each other. Look at me. I'm the greatest. I'm number one. To me, you look like number two. You know what I mean? What does he mean, Miss Skeffington? I'll tell you later. It's disgusting. In all your various adventures, messieurs and madame, not one of you has ever had an unsolved murder. Your reputations exist on this single fact. But what would the world say? if the five greatest living detectives found themselves trapped in a country house at the weekend, shut off from the outside world, only to discover a dead body on the floor stabbed 12 times in the back with a butcher's knife, and not one of you able to solve the crime. You mean murder? Dora, please, we're talking shop. Yes, murder, Mrs. Charleston. On the stroke of midnight, Someone in this house is going to be viciously murdered. Left out one small detail, Mr. Twain. Who victim? Is the, is the, who is the victim? That drives me crazy. Sounds like a short ride to me. Does it, Mr. Diamond? Well, we shall see who is sane and who is crazy around here. Mr. Wang. The victim is here at this very table, at this very moment. And so, too, ladies and gentlemen, 
is the murderer. Murder poo? Yes, dear. We're going to have a lovely murder poo. <laughs> Why don't you push your wheelchair down the driveway? We got business here. You say you know who's going to get it? Intimately. And you know how the crime is to be committed? Definitely. And exactly what time murder to take place? The murder. Precisely. Well, I, I know it's none of my business, but doesn't that mean that you're the murderer, Mr. Twain? No wise. I refuse to discuss this with wise. Dora's quite right. All fingers do seem to point to you. It's not much of a challenge, I'd say. Shall I make it more interesting, Mr. Charleston? One million dollars to the one who solves a crime, wagered against your reputations. One million dollars in tax-free cash. In addition, all the paperback rights and the film sale. It's 11 o'clock, amigos, just one hour before death strikes someone in this room. See you at midnight. Toodaloo. See here, Mr. Twain. Look, he's gone. No, he's not. He's down there. You don't. Fast, little bunny rabbit, ain't you? I've never moved, Mr. Diamond. I'm still down there. A little stunt done with mirrors. Is that so? We're gonna risk seven years' bad luck. Try it, Mr. Diamond. It's your funeral, Butterball. Oh. Wait, wait. Sometimes it doesn't work. You won this round, Mr. Diamond. My turn comes at midnight. <laughs> I hope he knows how to stop that thing.